Welcome to Key Points for March. This month, what the coronavirus means for global growth, what the policy response is likely to be, and of course, what all of that means for financial markets. Now, turning to our first point, the coronavirus or COVID-19 will have a material impact in terms of growth in the first quarter. Of course, this is coming at a time where global growth can least afford it. Consumption is under pressure and business investment has already been very weak. Now, we have little data out, but what we have seen coming out of China, the manufacturing PMI and service PMI are at record low levels. So clearly, this is having a profound impact. Now, the good news is that China is getting back up to speed again. Businesses are, are opening. But of course, the spread of the virus is a, a bigger concern and the uncertainty that that creates. Now, we think indeed that the global environment will see a dip, but it will recover as we get into the second and third quarters. But this is no doubt another hurdle for an already weak global economy. Now, turning to our second point, what does this mean from a policy perspective? Well, the interesting thing is when we've looked at previous exogenous shocks, natural disasters, things like earthquakes or tsunamis, Typically, they're relatively localized. They have a, a horrible impact, of course, on human life, but they're relatively localized and contained, and therefore you get a, a typical kind of V-shaped recovery. The trouble with COVID-19, of course, is that it's becoming global in nature, and you're not really sure uh, where the end point is likely to be. And as a result of that, that V-shape is likely to be more flatter in terms of the, the pickup. And indeed, we think that's likely to be something that will persist as we get into uh, the mid summer months of this year. But the other impact, of course, is it has both a supply shock, but also a demand impact. So a supply shock, meaning that businesses are closing their doors. It means that supply chains are being cut uh, down or shut down. And therefore, it means that the, the supply element of the economy is being constrained. And typically, this is very hard to stimulate. Cutting interest rates doesn't really allow businesses to get back on their feet again. The demand side, of course, is also being impacted. Consumers are less willing to spend. Of course, there's less travel and tourism. And again, that's another area that needs to be supported. So consequently, we think there will be two pronged approach to this. We think that there will be some kind of fiscal initiative. We've already seen that in China. Taxes are being postponed or tax holidays being implemented. But we also suspect that global central banks will provide further liquidity, further rate cuts as we go through the first part of this year. Now, turning to our third point, what does this mean for financial markets? Well, you'll know that we said uh, a couple of times already this year that we felt that markets were stretched, equity markets were, were due for a correction. And indeed, that's what's happened. We've seen one of the sharpest corrections in recent days, with the S&P 500 falling between sort of 10 and 15 percent. And we suspect that that's taken a lot of the heat out of these markets. We're back to levels that we were trading around roughly about October last year. So the good news is that a lot of that euphoria has gone, but we still think clearly the risks are to the downside because of the unpredictability of the uh, COVID-19 virus. But as, as I just said, policy will be responding. We are seeing further rate cuts coming through. We are seeing some fiscal initiatives, and this is likely to put a bottom under these markets as time goes by. So still risk to the downside, but we think a bottoming process may well get underway in the weeks ahead. Credit markets still vulnerable, government bonds record lows, but net-net we think the financial markets will still have a period of volatility and turbulence before we can pick up as we get into the spring and early summer. Remember, you can read our full investment insights for March on Zurich.com, along with all our other publications. Mm -hmm.